today and is going to be addressing the Council on public feedback on roadworks and public forum standing orders, etc. Welcome, Diane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you for the opportunity to address the Council. Um, as I've already advised in my written submission, I don't need to take up your time reading it out or speaking. I'm here to answer any questions. Councillors. I hope you've all read it, by the way. It's, I know it's quite comprehensive, but it's, it's, it's an important, a very important topic, I think, and I want to make sure that I substantiate the case I'm making as clearly and thoroughly as possible. So, Councillors, are there any Questions? Councillor Vandivis. About the uh, right to free speech and made reference to council a number of times. Uh, were there any or have there been any issues that you have perceived <coughs> where you feel that free speech hasn't been allowed to be exercised uh, in council? Um, yes, the f I've been watching the proceedings of the Dunedin City Council since I arrived in Dunedin in about 2001. I was familiar with local government for nearly 20 years before that. Um, and I saw a big difference between the way that the DCC conducted its business to both the Waiheke County Council and the Auckland City Council. And, um, I would say that I was shocked, okay? But the reason I'm making this submission is because I hope for better for the future. So I didn't make any particular incident explicit, but I'm sure many of you sitting around the table will know that I'd, I did, ha will, will understand when I say that I did have specific incidents in mind. So this is not theoretical about saying that the council's record in the past has been less than optimum, to put it mildly, um, I believe I do have really strong grounds for that belief, and that is at least part of my motivation. But, but, but Councillor Vandivis, I want to be positive about this and look forward to a better future. Do you believe that the uh, relatively new idea where we get our meetings videoed, at least, these entirely public <coughs> council meetings videoed uh, is helpful in regard to your concerns? It, there's a problem with the video that the law, I believe, has not caught up with it. So if the minutes of the meeting, which I believe are uh, stand in court of law as evidence, the confirmed minutes, are contradictory with what we observe and hear on the video, the minutes stand. Now that is really a problem because you've got two records and one has legal force and is taken as the law and will stand up in a court of evidence and also can be evidence for defamation proceedings or any other kind of legal proceedings. And then you have the video evidence. Now, as far as I know, the council's under no legal obligation to video the meeting. It's a, I'm not sure about that, but I don't think the law's caught up. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, but it is a, it's in an area where work needs to be done. Any further questions, councillors? There are none. Thank you, Diane. Um, Your Worship, I'd just like to add about meeting videos that I believe they're official information, so that if they do exist, a person can make a request for them, so that editing them <laughs> might be difficult, but of course the council had no obligation to make them, so if they don't exist, or councillors say they don't exist, you can't request them. So there's another problem there with official information. Anyway, thank they you all go up on, on the sure website. True, um, they, they all go live on. We, they, they, sorry, sorry. They don't belong to us. They belong to Channel 39. Oh, they do belong to us. So they all go on Channel 39's website, and we uh, put, uh, we put I, them I on our to, website as well. So I need, to, I need to stop and think about that, and, and this isn't the time to explain. No, it to but me. but just explaining that yeah, they, we I, do make them all public. We don't. They're not. Okay. So I need to work on that some more. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Can I invite Eleanor Doig uh, to uh, address us? Uh, Eleanor is the chair of the South Dunedin Community Network and uh, would like to address us on the subject of the South Dunedin Library and Community Complex work. Welcome, Eleanor. Good afternoon. 
afternoon and thank you for your time. It's a pleasure <coughs> and a privilege to be able to speak to the council. I didn't realise you could do it for a long time. It's because of Rachel, she told me. And uh, it's a real blessing, especially seeing South Dunedin doesn't have a community board. So there's no other direct means of talking to you. Um, I want to start off by doing a little rave. Um, the council has been investing in South Dunedin very successfully. Since 2015, when the flood happened, and it was a disaster, sorry. Um, then 2016, the DCC community team, terrific team, set up the stakeholders meeting. That was mostly people who were representing social service agencies in South Dunedin. And there's heaps of them. There's absolutely heaps of, of work going on in South Dunedin, but nobody knew what anybody else was doing. So that was the first thing, and then the DCC started a community hui, and that has now come to the, to the um, community to lead. So we've now had our fifth community hui, where the numbers have risen from about 35 or 40 to over 110 last time, with far more represent representation of people who are actually residents people with disability, older people, um, a much broader range of people. The whole goal of the hui is not just to sit and, and talk to each other. We know that climate change sits as, a, as an elephant in the room in South Dunedin. Underneath everything that's happening is this strata, oops, sorry, stratum of fear around what's going to happen around climate change. And our passion <coughs> is that South Dunedin will be accessible to the council um, in terms of uh, conversation around that, what that happens. So work that the DCC started has been taken over effectively by the community and we're working in partnership in a way that is um, producing some interest nationally. Um, Maria from the DCC and Janet Stevens from, Stevenson from the university and I are speaking to a national conference ne uh, next week on council community uh, collaboration around climate adaptation. Uh, apparently we're of interest nationally and I think we've got the seeds here of, of some really interesting and potentially innovative um, interaction and uh, I hate the word consultation. I don't want consultation, I want conversation between us, um, between the people who know stuff, the engineers and so on, and the people who are living with the potential effects of that, and the aim of all of us to build <coughs> something productive and creative, and to avoid anything that is going to produce an uproar um, and fear that fear accelerated in the community. Um, the DCC also funded, of course, the place-based funding um, last year, and we have since uh, appointed a, a South Dunedin community facilitator. It's not another organisation doing stuff in South Dunedin. Our co-papa is to connect people, um, some, any of these myriads of organisations and individuals and groups to be working together, and that is working amazingly well. It's fantastic. We've only had four months of it so far, and, um, uh, well, we've had a festival. And it, who, Did anybody come to the festival? It was good, wasn't it? It was better this year than ever before, partly because there's more people from the community actually involved now in, in running it, and the focus has gone... Oops. <laughs> Um, and now, of course, the community complex, which the site has been bought. This is really exciting, and we are very grateful um, that this has happened after 30 years. Whoops, sorry. Well, I don't think Tom is <laughs> thinking. I think you might bump it off. Bump it off. Right, is that working? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, 
So it's a really good site. Um, it's accessible. It's on the main street. It's a good, <coughs> solid, sturdy building. Um, there's potential for expansion in it. Um, but I understand there are lease issues. I'm sure that the DCC will resolve those and we will help in any way we can to do that. Um, so there is this sense growing in South Dunedin of, of an increasingly trusting relationship between the DCC and the community. And given the neglect of South Dunedin over decades, this is a very precious <laughs> plant that needs to be nurtured. And my thinking, or our thinking around the network, is around to address that now, in terms of really encouraging you to keep going with the hub funding, the comp community complex funding. I know there is funding there. And in my submission, which I can't speak to next week because I'm doing this thing in Auckland, um, I've said that I couldn't see any, f any funding for next year. That's wrong, so just put a line through it. There is some funding for next year and the year after, but we want to do it properly. I encourage you to put as much resource into this as you can. But, um, but the elephant in the room is around climate change. And I think because, we, I was at a lecture yesterday and they said that in the global report, Hawke's Bay was one of five communities that they reported on about being good at um, community consultation around climate change. I think we can do it much better. I'm not that impressed by what happened at Hawke's Bay, to be honest. And I think because we've got this grounding already of collaboration and cooperation between the council and the community, we've got the potential to do something really innovative and principled. I think people won't react with rage if they know that there is some socially just <coughs> solution possible. So I guess my, my challenge, my whole focus, our focus, the network's focus is around partnership. We want to be seen to be trusted and trusting partners with the council um, and to be doing that work together in a more open, more inclusive, increasingly creative way and um, that's the dream, that South Dunedin will actually turn into being um, a light, you know, a model of how climate adaptation and community um, council communication can be. And it's not just South Dunedin, might I just say. Anything that affects South Dunedin affects the whole city. If our playgrounds and sports grounds go under, that affects the whole city. There's a lot of business out there. We can't afford to let things just happen. We have to start being proactive and ethical in our way of dealing with that. So we don't have what's happening in Christchurch with us, years of litigation following, it, following a, a natural event. We want to be proactive and stop that potential. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you questions, yep. Questions, councillors? Councillor O'Malley. Thanks for your presentation, Eleanor. Um, my question actually, you started on right at the start, you mentioned that South Indian doesn't have a community board and then you're chair of the South Indian Community Network. With our place-based group funding and our emphasis on place-based groups, do you think that the network could perform the function of a community board or do you think that South Indian, we don't have an urban community board anywhere, do you think South Indian would be a candidate for a community board? Or could you do it through this network? I'm not sure, to be honest. I'm not sure about the efficacy of community boards, that there isn't maybe a better way of doing it. There's a lot of money goes into community boards, and I've lived in suburbs or in areas where there are community boards and I've never had anything to do with them. I've never known what they do. Um, the place-based funding is astoundingly effective for the amount of money, um, but it does rely on um, committed volunteers. 
I, I don't know, to be honest. I, I'm not a great fan of more bureaucracy, but there has to be some, some avenue for communication that's more effective than nothing. So your bias is a little away from the community board model, more towards the place-based model, but yeah, go on, thank you. <coughs> Councillor Hawkins. Yeah, kia ora, Eleanor, thanks for coming. Um, just a, a, a question around how, the, how that's structured. So you, you directly employ the committee, directly employs the a worker? facilitator, yep. Right, so, the, so the, the governance body, if you like, is the, is the committee that you're chairing. Okay, great, thank you. We've actually got another worker, a WINS worker now, so that we've got two for the price of one, <laughs> and it's really good. Yeah. So, and that Rawpu, the, the governing body, the um, <coughs> network Rawpu, <coughs> grew out of people who were attending the hui. So it's been this sort of escalating sense of engagement. And just following up on that, do you feel adequately supported as a committee in terms of developing governance capacity within that group? Because I know I mean, a lot of the effectiveness of the worker will, to a large degree, depend on um, the capacity of the board and yes, those that's sorts of things. Very true, Aaron. Um, we've got the DIA. Um, what do they call it? You know, they've got a course for groups on governance and strategic development. Um, Anna Frost is on our on our ROPU. Um, so we've got we've got good support in that way. Yeah. Councillor Elder. <coughs> Thank you, Eleanor, for coming along, and good to see that you're using public forum, and I encourage other people to do so, like you are today. Um, I was just following up on that, um, and considering, again, training for place-based as well, um, and whether there's a, an avenue for place-based across the city to get, get um, training together. Would that be helpful? Um, Yes, they're fairly disparate, the governance groups, but there's always, it's always good to talk to each other um, in principle. Um, and the workers across those funded areas are getting together. Oh, cool. So that they're um, learning from each other and supporting each other. But in terms of the governance groups, there's no harm. There's only ever good can come from that. Uh, the other question was, you talked about perception in the community about the DCC and where it's at and what kind of supports you're getting as a, as a community. Can you sort of en enlarge on that, comparing the feel in 2015 to now? Well, I think <coughs> everybody at this table, that probably everybody in the room, knows about the anger that was in the community in 2015 when the floods went west and there was... Um, um, admittedly poor maintenance and poor oversight of maintenance of mud traps, is it? You know, whatever Thanks. those drainage things are. Um, and there was a lot of anger. And I have to say in the community, there is a, a strong scepticism around the council, which is well earned. You know, <laughs> there's been very little engagement, positive engagement over the, over the time between South Dunedin and the council. And it's beginning to change. <coughs> People see that now, they're skeptical enough to understand that it's because climate change is coming, and I don't care what it's about. Um, there is this engagement growing between the council, and the people that we engage with from the council have been trustworthy so far. They have set, done what they're saying they're going to do. The funding has come through <coughs> as we've wished it would and we're using it as productively as possible. I see our job as working with the groups in the community to be willing to trust the council because the you know, I've worked as a bureaucrat, as a local, um, local body worker where you, know, you can't do anything right. The council can't do anything right. Well, that attitude's got to change, actually. There's got to be an attitude that actually the council is our partner. But I have to say, when I was working as a community development person in another city um, and watched the 
consultation going ahead about a, a change that was happening in the city. And I knew, that's not me, is it? <laughs> um, I knew that the decision had already been made and that plans were well underway for that change and the public was only at that point being consulted. That sucks. And if there's any hint of that lacking of integrity, everything will go west. But I trust the people we're dealing with not to, not to let that happen. Um, Thank you. Thanks for all your hard work. You're welcome. Gary. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eleanor, for your presentation and, and for the festival. And I was interested to ask you a question about the festival. What was the feedback from the community about this particular festival? This festival was much more successful than previous ones. There were more people there. There was a much wider <coughs> range of people. So a lot of older people came. A lot of people with disabilities were there. People stayed longer. Um, there were more things to do. There were tables and chairs to sit and eat at. Um, and I think, I think the festival is evolving into an, a real celebration. So, for example, instead of the committee that organises the festival doing everything, the churches um, organised the kids' area, and Nations Church organised the area for older people. And for next year, we want, you know, somebody, Rotary, <laughs> to organise um, the Move It Zone and so on, like bring more people into actual organising it so that there's a wider range of people involved in that because it is a very good community development. It felt that way at the Did festival. It? Yeah, very much so. Okay. So thank you for all your work for that. My second question was about um, the hub funding and you went on to say um, that any, as much resource as possible. Could you just uh, expand on that a little bit and talk about what that might look like? Well, um, for next year we have got uh, $2 million and for 2021 we've got $3.2 million. That's $5.2 million compared to the original budget of $11 million um, that was originally touted for this development. I don't want this to be a second best. Having, having gone this far, the potential for a really positive community hub, which involves a library for sure, but also has places where creative groups can meet. And there can be steady-as-you-go groups for older people, and a cafe, and showers and toilets for people who need them. And, you know, a creative space, a performance space, the potential to actually make something that is quite special is high. And I really don't want us to pinch pennies at this point to, to cut corners. I went to Christchurch to see their new library. Interestingly, according to the person I was speaking to, they had no community input into that um, design. And I don't want anything as grand as the Christchurch Library. It's amazing. But we don't, it would be, we don't need it. But what we do have has got to be good. It's got to be user-friendly and, and um, translating and, oops, sorry, engaging with the community. So could I just clarify with you what you're talking about is not necessarily the money spent, but the quality of the result? Quality of the result. And sometimes the, those two are aligned, but they're not always. Not always. I mean, one of the other questions I want to be clear about is how much co-funding we can go for. Like, who else, apart from the DCC, would get involved in this? Because they've done that in Christchurch, um, and that opens up a whole other avenue of development. So, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Elder. Just one more question. In, in, in terms of the hub and creating it in the future, where do you see it as placed, as helping South Dunedin go forward, um, especially related to the challenges I've got ahead? Well, s cynically, we could say, if this area is going to get flooded, why on earth would we invest in it? 
But if we don't invest in it, uh, there will only be a negative outcome for the city. So if we have a, if we have a, um, a complex where people can get together, talk to each other, where they can be accessed by other people, including council staff, um, you know, where, where there is that um, bumping place, that can only be a positive thing for our community. And I'm determined that this community will be able to be articulate and heard around the issues that are going to affect it. Yeah. Councillor Wilson. Sorry, two questions. Uh, two things. Can I move that we extend the yep. public forum, please? Seconded for that. Councillor Hawkins. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. Carried. Uh, in relation to the question on the um, <coughs> that you just posed about the Christchurch um, Library, can I just ask the CEO a question on that um, about the consultation that you'll be doing with the community and design? Criteria is that all right, Your Worship? Yep, there is a, a co-design process planned for this to, for this with the community, and um, and it's built into Simon's plan for delivering. So yes, we intend to be fully engaged with the community on the design. And that process has already started. Yeah. Thank you, Eleanor. You're really welcome. Appreciate you coming. Thank you very much. Thank you for your work. You're welcome. My pleasure.